Hi, parents and boys and girls. Um, in this mini lesson, I want to model what a close read looks like. And the reason why I want to do that is because when you get your packet on Monday for some of the reading activities, you will be asked to do a close read. And students, you should know what a close read is. Don't try to act like you don't know. Um, parents, you probably are wondering what exactly is a close read. And I'm anticipating some of the students pretending to not remember or to not know what a close read is. So I wanted to give you a model lesson and model what a close read looks like just so that you can use it as a reference. And I will post this obviously on Class Dojo and on Clever, okay, so that you can pull it up if there's any confusion as to what a close read looks like. So basically when I have students read a text and answer questions to the text, or do any kind of learning activity that ties into the text, um, I make them read it two times. The first time that they read it is to simply read it for enjoyment, okay? So they're just trying to soak it in basically. After they read it for enjoyment, I then have them do what is called a close read. All right, when they do a close read, now they are slowing themselves down so that they are making sure that they're thinking about what they're reading, okay? Because I've, I've taught my kids um, good reading is not simply you being able to read the text fluently and say all the words correctly. If you can do that, that that's great, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. Your mind needs to be engaged. I've taught them reading cannot be a passive activity. Your mind has to be involved. So when we do a close read, we're forcing ourselves to think about and make sense of the story or the text that we're reading. And we do that by using these three symbols right here. We simply use a question mark, we use an exclamation mark, and we circle words, okay? And this is how it works. As they are doing a close read, if a question pops in their head about a character, why the character is acting the way they are, why the character did what they just did, or what they think is gonna happen next, if they're asking what's going to happen next, then they simply jot a question mark down in that part of the story. And if there's space and they're doing it on paper, I've encouraged them to just jot that question down in the margin on the actual story so that they're kind of like, it's almost like they're keeping track of their thinking. Now, as they continue reading, they might come across the answer to one of the questions that they were asking earlier we would call that an aha moment, meaning they have figured something out. So they would put an exclamation mark there. And again, they could jot down what they just figured out. We circle words that we're not sure of the meaning, okay? Um, and so if we come across a word and we're not sure what it means, we might be able to say it. It's not okay to just keep reading and ignore that. You have to kind of stop yourself as a responsible reader and try and read what's going on in front of it, what's going on after it, and try and look for some context clues and try and make sense of the word. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna look at a fictional text called Anansi Learns a Lesson. And I'm gonna pretend that I'm a third grader. I'm gonna pretend that I've already done my read for enjoyment. So this is my second read, this is my close read. And I'm gonna model what a close read looks like as I read through this story. All right. All right. It's called Anansi Learns a Lesson. Anansi the spider lived alone and made his lunch the same time each day. One afternoon, Turtle stopped by. So a question just popped in my head. I'm wondering why did the question, why did the question, why did the turtle stop by? So I put a question mark here and I could even jot it down here. If I was doing this on paper, I would definitely jot it down, but it's kind of hard to write with my mouse here. So why, I could even write just the word why with a question mark. So it's just showing, I'm, I'm wondering why is the turtle stopping by? Okay, does he want to play? Does he want to hang out? Does he have important news to share? All right, so I'm going to keep reading. I hate to get in the way and interfere with your meal, but those bananas look wonderful, said turtle. I am so hungry. I have an aha moment. I just figured out why the turtle is stopping by. He's really hungry. So he's looking to get some food from Anansi the spider. So again, I, I could just jot down right here that he's hungry. All right, I'm just keeping track of my thinking. 
Anansi knew he should share with others. It was a big part of his culture, but he was hungry and didn't want to share. He decided to play a trick on Turtle. I'm going to pretend I don't know what this word culture means, so I'm going to circle it. And now I want to read what's happening in front of it, what's happening after it, and, and just try and make sense using some clues here. Anansi knew he should share with others. It was a big part of his culture. Hmm. That tells me that sharing was normally a part of Anansi's culture. So to me, that, that tells me that he would normally share, but he was hungry and didn't want to share this time. He decided to play a trick on Turtle. So to me, that shows me that culture has to do with what you would normally do, your normal way of life, basically. Okay? So I'm going to keep reading. Please help yourself, Anansi said with a sly grin. Hmm. So he's tricking him. He's pretending that he's going to share, but obviously he's up to something. I have to erase this before I move on to the next page, or else it will be there. So I'm going to go to the next page, slide this over here. So it's out of my way and keep reading. Turtle reached for the food. Shouldn't you wash your hands? Asked Anansi. Oh, yes, Turtle said. When Turtle returned, Anansi had eaten half of the bananas. I don't want the bananas to spoil, said Anansi. Turtle got closer and made another attempt to eat. Turtle, please go wash your hands, he said. Turtle knew his hands were clean, but Anansi still thought they were filthy. However, Turtle was too shy and timid to say no. When he returned, Anansi had eaten the rest of the fruit. Ha ha, I tricked you, Turtle, said Anansi. You didn't get any bananas. So I'm just going to just jot down a, a question mark here because I'm, I'm just wondering, like, why is Anansi being this way? It, it seems like they know each other. So it just seems like he's he's kind of being mean. So I'm just wondering why is what, what, why is he acting this way? And also th this word timid, it's even highlighted. What does this word timid mean? It says Turtle knew his hands were clean, but Anansi still thought they were a little filthy. However, Turtle was too shy and timid to say no. Well, I noticed right before the word timid, it says shy. He was too shy and timid. So it sounds like timid and shy mean almost the same thing. So they, they must be synonyms. So I'm going to keep on reading. Again, I, I asked the question, why is Anansi being this way? And I'm even wondering what's going to happen next. Like, what is Turtle going to do next? Because clearly he's starting to see that Anansi is doing this on purpose. All right, so I keep reading. Turtle was angry at Anansi. He decided to teach that nasty spider a lesson. Please come to my house at the bottom of the lake for dinner tomorrow, said Turtle. So you know what? I have an aha moment. I was wondering what Turtle was going to do, and I just figured it out. He is going to now play a trick on Anansi. And I also have a question, because it goes on to say, please come to my house at the bottom of the lake for dinner tomorrow, said Turtle. So I'm wondering, what is Turtle up to? What trick is he going to play? on Anansi to get back at him, okay? So again, I'm just monitoring, I'm keeping track of my thinking. Anansi quickly said yes, he loved free food. Turtle couldn't trick Alon or Anansi alone, so he decided to ask Fish to, go to get involved and help make a plan. Turtle found Fish at the lake. Fish, I need your help, he said. You know what, it says that they're gonna make a plan so I'm just wondering, what is this plan going to be? So I keep reading. Fish, I need your help, he said. With your cooperation, we can trick Anansi. Anansi had tricked Fish many times, so Fish was happy to help. Together, the two friends created a clever plan. Hmm. All right. I still don't know what the plan is, though. So obviously, we're going to keep reading. I need to erase this. Move this out of my way. Scroll up. Here we go. Let's keep reading. Let's see what turtle and fish are up to. Let's see what their plan is. The next day, Anansi went to the lake. Fish met him at the water's edge. Come, Anansi, said Fish. 
We will swim to Turtle's house together. Anansi jumped into the water. He was a clumsy and awkward swimmer. He was also very light. Hmm, this word awkward, what does that mean? Sounds like awkward is being used to describe what kind of swimmer Anansi is. So does that mean he's a good swimmer? Does that mean he's a bad swimmer? Well, again, the key is looking back and looking for some context clues. So it says, we will swim to Turtle's house together. That really doesn't tell me if he's a good swimmer or a bad swimmer. So let's keep reading. Anansi jumped into the water. He was a clumsy and awkward swimmer. I've heard of clumsy before. Clumsy people trip a lot and fall, trip over themselves. They, they do silly things. Clumsy would be a word that you would use to describe yourself if, if you're not good at something. Like if you're a clumsy um, bike rider, then maybe that means you obviously fall off your bike a lot. So clumsy and awkward, awkward must be kind of like a synonym for clumsy in this case. So awkward swimmer, meaning he's not a very good swimmer. Okay. So let's keep reading. It says he was also very light. Okay. How will I ever get down to Turtle's house? He cried. Hmm. So if you're light, if you're light, this is an aha moment. I know that things that are really light, when you put them in water, what do they do? They float. So if Anansi is really light, then he's probably having a hard time swimming down because he's floating and he's not a strong swimmer. In order to swim down, he would have to be a good swimmer. So I just figured that out for myself. Um, How will I ever get down to Turtle's house? He cried. Fish knew what to say. Grab some heavy stones. Then you will sink, not float. I have a question. I wonder if grabbing these heavy stones, if fish telling Anansi to grab the stones is a part of their plan. Let's keep reading. Anansi picked up two big stones jumped into the lake and sank down, down, down. Fish swam at his side. At Turtle's house, Anansi saw a wonderful feast of berries. Okay, so I'm just kind of keeping track of what's going on. Fish was able to swim down as Anansi sank down. The stones that he was holding on to is what was helping him to sink down to where the food was, to where the feast was, all right? So I wonder what's going to happen next. Actually, I'm going to put a question mark here because thinking about this, hmm, what do you need to be able to use if you're going to eat food? Your hands, right? Well, what's going on with Anansi's hands and his arms right now? What is he holding on to? If you're thinking stones, that's what I'm thinking. So what would he have to do? If he wants to grab some food to eat it. Are you tracking me? He's going to have to let go of those stones. Is he a strong swimmer? So I'm predicting that if he lets go of those stones, he's going to go floating back up to the top before he can grab any food. Let's see if that happens. All right. Welcome, Anansi, said Turtle. Drop those stones and help yourself. Ooh, an aha moment. My prediction was right. He's telling him to drop the stones. So let's see if he floats to the top. As soon as Anansi dropped the stones, he rocketed to the surface of the lake. Anansi sputtered furiously. Fish and turtle tricked me, he cried angrily. Hmm. So our prediction was right. He floated to the top. As a matter of fact, it says he's, he rocketed to the top. So that tells me he floated really quick. This word sputtered. What does it mean here? As soon as Anansi dropped the stones, he rocketed to the surface of the lake. So I'm visualizing this. So he shot up. He's floating to the top. Anansi sputtered furiously. I know furiously means um, to do something in a very, very angry way. He wanted food. He's not getting it because he shot up to the top before he can grab any. So that would explain why he's furious, but he's sputtering. He sputtered furiously. So what does it mean to sputter? Well, look at what happens next. Boys and girls, you learn what this is. There's quotation marks. This is dialogue. He says this. He sputtered furiously, and this is what he sputters. 
Fish and turtle trick me, he cried angrily. So what does that mean to sputter? It sounds like it's a word that is being used to um, say that he's speaking or, or that he's saying this. And if he's sputtering furiously, he's saying it in a really angry way. And here's another clue. He cried angrily. All right, let's keep reading. Back at the bottom of the lake, Turtle and Fish laughed and laughed. We worked together and taught Anansi a lesson, said Turtle. What a good way to solve a problem, said Fish. Let's eat. And you can see that that is the end of the story. So just to kind of backtrack and make sense of everything that I just read, this is what good, good readers do. They've got to make sure that they understand what's going on here. So I'm just going to kind of summarize what the story was about. So you have Anansi and Turtle in the beginning of the story. Turtle is really hungry, so he stops by Anansi's place because he has all these bananas, if I recall. Um, and he asks if he could have some food to eat, if, if he could share his food with him. And Anansi um, acted like he was going to share, but remember, he didn't really want to share, so he played a trick. And he um, tricked Turtle two times into going to wash his hands. And after the second time, all of the food was gone. So this got Turtle really upset. And Turtle wanted to give back at Anansi. So he invited him to his place for um, dinner the next night. And Turtle realized that he couldn't trick Anansi alone. So he got fish to help him out. And they developed this plan. And the plan was when Anansi arrived, fish would um, offer to swim down to the bottom of the lake, okay, with Anansi to, to get the food. But um, Anansi, remember, was not a good swimmer. So Fish helped him by giving him stones that helped him to sink down to the bottom where the food was, all right? But once he was down at the bottom, in order to get the food, he would have to let go of the stones. So Turtle encouraged him, let go of the stones and grab some food, basically, which caused Anansi to shoot back up and float to the top, making Anansi kind of embarrassed and upset and angry because he realized he was tricked. And basically, Turtle and Fish got a good laugh out of it because they got Anansi back. They gave him a piece of his own medicine. So boys and girls and parents, hopefully you now understand how a close read looks. Um, don't let your child trick you into thinking that they don't know what a close read is. Typically, it's just because they don't want to read it a second time. All right, so where it says to do a close read, make sure that they are slowing themselves down and using these symbols um, to kind of track their thinking as they read through the text. And again, feel free to, to just jot down notes in the margins of your paper, all right? I'm going to go ahead and post this link to this lesson on Class Dojo as well as um, Clever, all right, so that you guys can have access to it, and I'll send out a Dojo message. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good weekend.